Greetings and salutations. This is Abe Abdelhadi with The Bitter Truth, where we may not have all the answers, but we're going to ask an awful lot of questions. You can also become a bitter pill or a spoonful of sugar by visiting patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. And uh, we appreciate any kind of support you want to uh, become a member and all that kind of stuff. We have a ton of nice swag for you all. Uh, today, we've got uh, Ted Brown, who's running for Congress in the 17th District. He's running on the Libertarian ticket. And uh, Ted, thanks for coming in, man. Oh, thanks for having me, Abe. Hey, so, okay. Um, you used to live in California, right? I did, yes. And then I moved here to Austin to uh, have a better lifestyle and a less expensive lifestyle. And it's less expensive. <laughs> uh, so how, well, how long have you been here? Uh, about two years. Oh, man. Okay. So diving right into Texas then. Exactly. Okay. Lo- love it here. All right. Yeah. I, I, I'm never going to go home. <laughs> I've been here four and a half years. I'm never going to go back. And I mean, I go to visit, but... And then what I'm seeing is I'm, it's even a better decision than it was two years ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we can we can go back and forth. I, I have a love-hate relationship. I was born and raised in California. Were you born and raised there too? No. I'm from the Ohio Valley, uh, Wheeling, West Virginia. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was born and raised there. My mom, my mom and dad are immigrants and... You know, they just pointed at a map and landed in California. So, well, it's a great place usually. Yeah, you know, yeah. In the '60s, it was different. You know, I watched it change. So, I get, I, I relate to the Austinites when they bitch about, well, 20 years ago, this bar was there. Well, yeah, I know, I know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's it's depressing, but it, you know, just change is inevitable. I guess it know? is absolutely. Um, but uh, so what? what uh, so okay, so you're running for the district 17 seat that is getting vacated by Bill Flores, who's a Republican, correct? Correct. Yes. And so, um. Obviously, there's gonna be uh, you got a couple guys in the in the like Pete Sessions is gonna run, he's he, he's in the he's he's gonna run a, a, as a as a Republican in the primary. Right. Well, sadly enough, because he was a congressman until last year from right. uh, Dallas, and then right. he was defeated for re-election, and then he didn't get the message, so he wanted to find a better district, and right. thought that the uh, 17th uh, where he grew up right. would be a better district. But I, th- I think some of the locals in the district, even the Republicans, are thinking, well, you know, we'd rather have somebody who's actually from here yeah. as uh, someone who lives here, you know, yeah. rather than just this, this carpetbagger coming. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to use that term, car- get a damn carpetbagger. But, but, uh, yeah, exactly. But yeah, but, but, and Waco's not Dallas. Austin ain't Dallas. True, exactly. Right? So it's like, it's like being, it's like Orange, Dallas is like Orange County without the beach, <laughs> right? So it's kind of like, so, what, do you, what, what do you know being from Dallas? Something like that. So he, he did he move, excuse me, did he move to the area pretty much, did he know Bill Flores was going to uh, retire or did he, or not run again or did he... Um, did did he know that ahead of time? Did, and that made his move. Well, that part I don't know. I mean, okay. those guys are those guys. I mean, they were colleagues for years. So I don't know if they talked to each other or not. Okay. And um, so he lost to Colin Allred, right? And apparently Pete Sessions is a diehard Trump fan, no matter what happens, right? That's what it appears like. I understand that uh, there was some sort of like uh, independent expenditure from a Trump uh, PAC for like three million dollars for him. Right. Hopefully they won't do that in uh, hmm. in. Of course, that would go a long way in, uh, <laughs> yeah. in the 17th, more yeah. so than in Dallas there. And then um, you got David Jaramillo, Iraqi vet. He's running for the Democratic primary. And uh, Rick and Rick Kennedy, uh, who lost to Flores in 18, he's going to he's trying to he's going to run in the primary too, right, for the Republicans? Uh, Democrats, yeah. Oh, he, wait. he's Kennedy's, oh. Kennedy's the Democrat. Oh, he lost to Bill Flores. Right, exactly. Right, right, right. I got you, got you. Okay. And I wasn't aware of Hermosillo, so... Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jaramillo. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's apparently he's uh, been, he got out of high school in two thousand five, signed up, and uh, did two tours. Mm. Um, so I don't know, uh, you know, what his platform really is. I just know that there's there's folks that are going to try to, you know, it's going to be a contested deal. Um, True. Well, there's another Republican uh, uh, soldier named Sutton on the Republican side, also who's running Trent, the primary. Trent Sutton. Yeah. Trent Sutton. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so let me ask you something. So um, it, w- you're running as a lib. Yes. Uh, libertarian. Not sure for liberal, but libertarian. Um, exactly but not the same thing, just like this. libertarians are not liberal and not conservative. Right. Uh, well, and yeah, we're going to get into that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, but, but no, but, uh, but so in the, uh, on the libertarian ticket, um, are you, are you going for the nomination unopposed or what's going on with that? I expect I'll be unopposed. Okay. One thing that the, uh, in the past, uh, libertarian candidates haven't had to pay filing fees. And the state legislature, the Republicans, imposed filing fees on us for the first time for the uh, 2020 election because they were worried about libertarians taking votes away from Republican candidates, uh, which is really not uh, not true from right. uh, p- past history. But Republicans always think that we take votes from Republican candidates. So they wanted to make it harder for libertarians to get on the ballot. So yeah. they, they imposed a $3,125 filing fee on congressional candidates, less for low, other offices. What but, a bunch of fuckers. Yeah, they just don't want... Uh, 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 libertarians on the ballot. See, and 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 that and that and that I, that 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 argument. It, it's the same thing as like a gotcha question mm-hmm. when somebody bitches about a gotcha question. Yeah, I'm like, well, own up to it. You mm-hmm. didn't know. It's not a gotcha question. You just didn't know. 
You know, it's like it's like, what votes did you take? I don't owe you my vote. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, I'm going to vote for who I think should be the guy. Exactly right. And, and that's why I'm a big fan of ranked choice voting. Everyone freaks out when you talk about the electoral college. Mm-hmm. But ranked choice voting would fix both problems because you know the the, the conservative argument you hear, and by the, and the Democrats don't bitch about the electoral college until they lose. One, oh, exactly. Right? Yeah. They, they're fine with it mm-hmm. before, but then you know Gore and 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 uh, mm-hmm. and um, Clinton happen, and then exactly. well, we got to get rid of it. Well. Yeah. Was, how about how about you know? The, but then the argument here is the coasts will then vote for the president. Yeah. Right. But Maine's doing ranked choice voting. In fact, they did the last two cycles of, of ranked choice voting, mm-hmm. and that's been working really well. It has, and, the, and some cities use it. San Francisco uses it for uh, local elections. Oakland, California, yeah, yeah. and some other cities as well. Yeah. yeah. So you're in favor of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good idea. Now, uh, uh, libertarians use it in some internal elections. Sure. And in Texas, they use approval voting, which means just voting for everybody you like and just not voting for the people you don't like. So say, for example, you could vote for two candidates if right. you wanted. Right. Well, that's what I like about ranked yeah. choice voting. And if you get you have four or five people on the ballot. Yeah, then, then you rank them. Yeah, yeah. And then you're, you're, you're number one. If they don't get enough votes, then we go to your number two. Exactly. You did vote for them. And if you the last couple you're just filling space, well, mm-hmm. then that's the li- that's the life you chose. <laughs> yeah, or you can just not do that and just vote for number one if you want it. That's, right, it's and up it's, to you. And look, up to you. Yeah, and so yeah. Um, but um, okay, so you're so three thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars. I know it's expensive, but of course, of, of course, I'm going to loan that to the campaign and then raise money to pay myself back during sure. the campaign. Absolutely. But uh, it's still, it's so funny. Uh, Rick Kennedy, the Democrat, he actually act just by chance came by my front door a couple of weeks ago collecting signatures. You can collect signatures instead. Right. And uh, he was looking for signatures in my neighborhood. And he said that he almost has enough signatures to avoid paying the filing fee. Wow. But uh, it's so funny. So here, the filing fees go to pay for the Democratic and Republican primaries. So the Democrat whose primary is paid for uh, by the filing fees, doesn't have to pay one. And I, as a libertarian, have to pay one. And we don't have a primary. We have a convention right. where we get no state money and don't want it. Right. But uh, here we're paying towards the general fund and to the Democratic and Republican primaries. Right. So that's why we have a lawsuit pending, two lawsuits pending against the filing fees. In Texas? Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, when, when, when were those filed? Uh, uh, about two or three months ago was one, and about a month ago was another. One's in federal court and one's in state court. Okay. And we're hoping to get a positive ruling soon, but we just don't know when, whether it's going to like be ahead of the filing sure. deadline or afterwards. Well, if there are any, if there are any, if they, if the, if they're an appointee of the last three presidents, there's no, I mean, you know, <laughs> I could see them like ruling against it. It's, it's, it's just gotten so obvious where they steal in broad daylight now. Oh yeah. They're not even, tr- they're not even trying to hide it. Like, like you, if, you, if you watch uh, corporate news, mm-hmm. you know, before they would have a guy who was, um, you know, a, a, a policy analyst or whatever. Now they just flat out hire James Clapper mm-hmm. and they just make him an, an expert. And it's like, or they'll hire General so-and-so who's on the board of like Baker or Raytheon or whoever. Mm-hmm. And it's not hard these days. I'm like, if, if I'm in a bar sometimes, I'm watching the news with subtitles. I'm like, well, who, who's that guy? And I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll Google him. Oh, yeah. And he's on the board of like, you know, Halliburton or whatever. And you're, oh, yeah. It's, it's just, it's just oh, broad. And then they're going, well, coincidentally, I'm at, you know, I, I, I work for, uh, you know Hewlett Packard or Bo- Boeing, yeah. and I got uh, and, I, and coincidentally, I think the F thirty five is a goddamn good idea. Oh yeah, you know coincidentally. Well, that's who gets appointed to the Trump administration. Like uh, I think Secretary of Defense Mark Esper was yeah. uh, an executive of one of those companies and lobbyist. Well, yeah, he was a lobbyist mm-hmm. uh, for that industry. Yeah. So yeah, I mean you know, and then uh, the health the health secretary was with the. Uh, the previous one, I think, was was with the uh, uh, big pharma, yeah. for example, That's a company, his, yeah, not a lobbyist. And then Eric and then Eric, Eric Holder famously left being top cop to go work with Covington and Burling for four million a year, and he was there before he became top mm-hmm. cop. He was only getting a million a year, <laughs> but then after he was in the Obama administration and he let HSBC slide among a bunch of other people, yeah, he got his job back at Covington Burling with coming uh, for four million a year, and Covington Burling is HSBC's law firm. Uh. So it's just like. It's all, it's all, it's all uh, in and out, in and out. Yeah, you know? it's yeah. like it's like a, it's like a big club, and we ain't in it. Exactly as, right. As George Carlin famously George Car- said, George Carlin is so right about so many things. I sure wish he was still with us because oh, you could imagine just... what he would say about some. Oh my god! <laughs> and, you know, it's funny about George Carlin, man. It's like he, um, uh, he he was married for like forty years. Was he? Yeah, and, yeah. and people, a lot of people don't know that because you know, he was this pot smoking guy and mm-hmm. hip guy, but he was married for like forty years and. Um, I noticed. I didn't notice this until I, I. I didn't know his wife had died, oh. and then I noticed the 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 uh, a couple specials in where I was going. God, he's just screaming an awful lot. Mm-hmm. You know, before he was more subtle, and then I read that his wife had died. I go, oh, mm-hmm. you know, that probably had, had something to do with it. And then he and then he remarried oh. pretty quickly, mm-hmm. about like not not even eighteen months. 
but it still, you know, kind of had an effect on on his outlook. But, but, then, yeah. it was, but then he got a more dark outlook. Oh yeah, you know, because he had this gr- one great joke about climate change, and um, he was just like, "You guys aren't trying to save the planet; you're trying to save yourselves." Because when we all die and get burned up, the earth is going to heal itself. It's sure. going to eject whatever concrete and plastic and whatever we did mm-hmm. to it within another billion years. Yeah. And then some new parasite's going to come along. You're just afraid that we're going to die. <laughs> you're not afraid of the earth. You're afraid that we're going to get drowned. We're mm-hmm. going to get burned up. We're going to get set on fire. Oh, yeah. And it was just a, you know, I'm not doing it justice, but it was. A, um, mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he was good. It was amazing. So, so, um, so what's, okay, obviously the libertarian platform. Um, we can go into that generally, but uh, but what specifically are you running on? Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a you know hardcore libertarian. I okay. believe in personal freedom, economic freedom, anti-war, limited government. But I'm really an anti-war candidate against foreign intervention. I think it's terrible that the. Um, in fact, I'm pretty much against U.S. foreign policy since World War II. Pretty I mean, much. Yeah, we've been um, the the U.S. has been interfering all over the world, become the world's policeman. <clears throat> And uh, we used to be like the beacon of freedom and liberty throughout the world. And everybody looked up, looked to us for, uh, uh, you know, our democracy, our freedoms mm-hmm. and everything. And now we're like the big bully in the world. We're like interfering yeah. everywhere. Uh, right now we have troops in 100 and 150 countries yeah. out of 193, 173,000 yeah. troops are yeah. um, over in all these countries. And uh, and uh, the the worst is in the Middle East, though. That's where our uh, just uh, like going around like a bull in a china shop yeah. has, has totally damaged the Middle East yeah. and also created terrorists over there. Well, and and and, and the the biggest mistake we have made in the history of this country, um, we made a lot, but the the biggest one I believe in the last at least fifty years, almost as bad as Vietnam, mm-hmm. was Iraq. Oh, for sure. Going into Iraq was a complete clusterfuck, and that yeah. and we're we are reaping. We're going to reap the benefit of that. I'm being sarcastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For at least another fifty years. Terrible, and it was the, not, not even just this one. It was the first one, the Gulf War in '91. That yeah. was ridiculous. There that was, was ridiculous. no there was no reason to to be in there, and it, nope. fo- it followed up with uh, the Iraq War in 2003, mm-hmm. the uh, uh, occupation of Afghanistan, Libya, uh, Libya, Syria, uh, Syria interference, and trying to yeah. find, try, actually even trying to looking for a side to support in Syria when yeah. there was nobody worth supporting. Yeah, and then um, and now uh, uh, with uh, supporting the Saudi. Um, uh, actions against uh, one faction in Yemen. Yeah. Why should we care what faction in Yemen? hundred you know? percent. And, and that's yeah. like, like my dad's Palestinian. Yeah. That's where I get the name from, ah. which is funny because I've, e- I've emailed APAC like six times and I can't get anybody to come on the show. Huh. I don't know why. With the last name like Abdul Hadi, yeah. in a show called The Bitter Truth, I have no idea why they wouldn't come on. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. But no, but seriously, my, um, uh, in my lifetime, I never thought the, the, that we would be kissing Saudi ass to the degree that we do. Terrible. I mean, in this, I remember the seventies when the deals were getting made and everything, and, and but they still had this you know mark on them. Now, the, the the mainstream media just sort of just glosses over pretty much everything. They, they didn't even give a shit about their hum, their human rights record until Khashoggi got killed because he was like one of them. Oh yeah, exactly. But to see, they're they're even owned by the uh, the system. I mean, like for example, NBC is owned by General Electric, which is a military oh, contractor. Not anymore. Um, they, uh, Comcast. Oh, is it? It's been about about eight, nine, nine years now. Gen, G, oh. sold, G sold it a while ago. Okay. But Comcast, they still have contracts and they still, sure. you know, why not? They, they do what they do. You know, why not? That, that's why M- MSNBC does what it does. Why not? But with Saudi Arabia, I mean, it goes back a ways. Like, I still remember complaining uh, George W. Bush was holding hands with the, the king of Saudi Arabia in one picture. Then Obama was bowing to the king of Saudi Arabia. Yep. Then, like, Trump is like with some orb that looks like he's in, uh, like, uh, Harry Potter or, or something. Or sleeper with Woody yeah, Allen. Yeah, <laughs> what, 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 what the heck is going on? It's like he was like some sort of satanic ritual or yeah. something. Uh, this is like, they all just are right into bed with the and Saudi. And they all bend uh, at the waist and get yeah. that fucking medal. They all got that medal. Clinton, Bush, oh. Obama, they all, and, 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 and every side complains when the other guy bows, but then they ignore the fact that their guy bows. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right? And, a, and, and Trump bowed, and he got the he got the medal, and they got to hold the orb. Yeah, the orb. <laughs> Whatever. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I can't, Saudi Arabia, I mean, the hi, the hijackers from 9-11 were Saudi Arabians. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Well, that's like, the, and that's the thing that makes me so angry <laughs> is when you discuss 9-11. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, whether or not it was a conspiracy before or after the fact, the cover-up was just – was mm-hmm. there. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the facts that would point to a cover-up. Yeah. Right? I mean, you, you had like 41 bin Laden family members mm-hmm. fly out of the country when every U.S. plane was grounded for five days. Yeah. They got out without a debriefing from any agency. Mm-hmm. Not FBI, not CIA. Yeah. At least the FBI. Right? Because right. That's, that's a national, you know, sure. cop group. Sure. Didn't even talk to them. They just skedaddled off. No problem, and you're and you're like, well, wait a minute, and then even the 9/11 Commission report, which is about as you know valuable as the the Warren mm-hmm. Commission, yeah. But even they said mm-hmm. that all the money personnel came from Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, right? Who do we evade? 
Iraq and Afghanistan. Exactly. For lithium and oil. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And in fact, the way I look at it is, okay, we spend billions and billions on intelligence and on the military and everything, and they didn't have any sense that 9-11 was going to happen. Right. So these these ragtag bag uh, band of criminals come in and blow up a building or right. more than one building. Right. And then instead of like firing everybody and like blaming all these people in the intelligence community that effed up, right. they give them more power, more money, yeah. and, uh, and, um, and cause the uh, loss of our liberties with the USA Patriot Act. Patriot yeah. Acts 1 and 2. I'm going to yeah. get into some of that crap yeah. because, because while we were sleeping during the hearings, mm-hmm. the Democratic Congress and right. they're Democrats, they're supposed to be nice to us. They're supposed to be about yeah. our rights and niceness mm-hmm. and goodness and peopleness. And well, they just re- they just renewed the Patriot Act. They did. And uh, Justin Amish, the uh, congressman from Michigan who was a Republican and then became an independent, yeah. who's c- sort of like a libertarian. He's kind of like a libertarian. Yeah. He's the one that tried to get the uh, Patriot Act part removed from the continuing resolution. But no, the Democratic leadership, Nancy Pelosi That's right. wanted that. That's right. And here they're giving all this power to Trump, who they want to impeach and can't stand. And they think he's crazy. But the last three years in a row, including this budget, yeah. is going to be $1.4 trillion. They gave him $80 billion more yeah. than what he asked for. Yeah. But I thought he was crazy. Yeah. He's crazy, man. And then you know, do you notice, too, that they always notice how presidential he is when he bombs people? Oh, yeah. Exactly. He's, a, he's an asshole. But then when he bombs – even Van Jones. I remember the night of the election. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a, a white lash. And he's doing this, mm-hmm. like, freaking out, you know, pulling – his hair is on fire kind of a thing. Yeah. And then six months later, you know, he fires 57 Tomahawk missiles into Syria. And all of a sudden it's like, well, tonight we saw the president become a president. Really? It's, Six months ago, it was a white lash, you fucking dick. And now... Yeah, exactly. And it seems like a lot of a lot of what some of Trump's supporters liked was that he was against all the endless wars. In fact, that might yeah. be why he got a lot of support. Well, I think that's also why... And then he doesn't do it. I don't, I don't want to get too <laughs> in the weeds with this going to talk about your yeah, platform, right. but I think this is also why mm-hmm. those douchebags at the CIA have been fucking with him. Sure. There's no proof of a P-tape. Never existed. Just steel dossier is wildly debunked. Mm-hmm. The, 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 we, you know, and the DNC, by the way, did pay a foreign operative a million bucks to come up with that report. So technically, they broke a law. They paid a foreign agent to d- dig up dirt on an American candidate. And I'm not a Trump fan, by the way. No, when has anybody ever done that? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, all that to say mm-hmm. that the Pete thing went away. I mean, it, but they just keep in. It, it's because I think he was so anti-war in the beginning. Yeah. And then he came in. And they're like, we got to control this guy. Oh, yeah. And then the Russiagate smear began. And that was like two and a half years of just yeah. absolute bullshit. By the way, I won bets on that. I won some money. Um you know, people were, you know, I lost money on the impeachment because I said it was going to happen February of last year. Uh, so I lost 200 bucks on that. Yeah, they just were looking for the right issue that they thought they could like play on yeah, that. Yeah, I thought for sure as, they, as soon as they took the house, mm-hmm. they were going to impeach him and it was going to be on war crimes. And so I, I gave it a date mm-hmm. and I said, February of 2018, you watch. And then I watched them not do it because Nancy Pelosi said it wouldn't be politically expedient. So she didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Right. So I lost 200 bucks. But then on Russiagate, I won 500 bucks because oh, I had, I had okay. five separate bets for 100 bucks a pop. One guy still owes me money, but that's okay. He's still my friend. So in other words, you're admitting to a crime, which is uh, uh, illegal betting. Illegal betting. Yeah. Of course, uh, libertarians would legalize that, but technically that's not legal. Right. And I'm not breaking <laughs> any knees. I'm not, I'm not sending, you know, I'm not sending a guy to your house <laughs> to get the money. When, I have a friend that owes me a hundred bucks. I'm like, going, hey, listen, you owe me some money. It's yeah. not good for business. Mm-hmm. It sends a bad message. We got to take care of this. You know, it's not good. Exactly. Um, but so, okay. Um, so obviously you're anti-war. Oh yeah. Good thing. Um, and so, and, and, and so um, obviously you're, you're part of a Congress, not the Senate. It's a bigger body. Um, what, just on the war part, before we start moving on the rest of your platform, what would you do to start engaging um, citizens or the Congress to like, you know, because we got to get people don't pay attention to this. Like, oh no, not at all. In fact, most people um, think they hear they hear the rhetoric. You know, somebody says, you know, like Trump, I want to end these wars, and I'm taking my taking troops out of Syria. Then they ignore the next part, which is just moved them to a different part of the country yeah. to guard an oil well. Yeah. So it's the same same with your congressman. That's the reason why Congress is thought of like, what, 10% of the people approve of Congress, but like 90% approve of their own congressman? Yeah. Because they don't realize their congressman is actually part of the group they don't approve of. Right. And and mostly uh, contributes. Uh, There's very few congressmen that are like... um, just oppose everything that they do up there. I mean, right. Ron Paul's not in Congress anymore. No. He used to be called Dr. No because he actually yeah. voted against that. But Justin Amish does some of that. And Thomas Massey from Kentucky, those okay. two congressmen are, okay. are pretty good. Yeah. They're yeah. pretty good. But yeah. uh, and but otherwise, if you go beyond them, it's a, there's nobody hardly. Well, I'm from Pasadena, California, and uh, Adam Schiff was our guy. Yeah. I ran, was... I ran against him three times when I lived in California. Really? Yeah. Okay. He, he, was, he was just kind of a milk toasty. Yeah. And, you know, Pasadena was cool. 
yeah. like living there. So, you know, and I didn't really pay much attention to him. I just thought, okay, he's the Democrat, whatever. He's, he's the corporate guy. Yeah. But he was a war, he was a warmonger. He favored the Iraq war. He favored the Iraq war. He favored uh, yeah. Russia. He, I mean, and all my friends are like, you know, excited about this impeachment hearing. Yeah. I'm like, you do know he's not going to get convicted, right? Well, that's going to be a mark on his record. Yeah, because a mark on Bill Clinton's record stopped him from getting on Jeff Epstein's plane, right? <laughs> right? I purged myself for a blowjob, but yeah. I'm still going to take 26 plane rides on a pedophile's plane who's been a convicted pedophile. Right. Epstein wasn't too concerned about having Clinton on his plane. You Pretty should much. Look, at, look at it from that side. That's so, true, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it he, makes he, him look bad. <laughs> yeah, he might have been besmirched by having Clinton on his plane. Right. Well, yeah. Trump, too. <laughs> and Ehud Barak was a former Israeli prime minister. I mean, this mm. is some big high cotton stuff, and which, yeah. you know, to me, and you already know this being, you know, Libertarian or Green Party, I think both of you guys know this inherently, but if the Epstein saga showed us anything, it's that these guys all fly around up here doing heinous things, mm-hmm. and then they got us squabbling about, squabbling about guns and gays. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, they take the money from all the guys that we don't want them taking money from. Yeah. And I don't know how we're going to ever stop that, because right. it just seems like the, the corporatocracy is kind of completed. Well, they have. They call it the Overton window, like where there's a supposedly an acceptable range of political viewpoints. Right. And if you get outside of that range, you're yeah. considered kind of out there, like Tulsi Gabbard is kind of getting into that category. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, but they, they really promote and encourage ex- uh, very vigorous debate within that window. Sure. That's why you get some of these uh, uh, issues that are not that important, having people like going to the mat for mm-hmm. and arguing very vigorously yeah. on both sides. Yeah. And most of but then they ignore the $23 trillion dollar national debt. They ignore all the wars. Mm-hmm. They ignore all that because that's not, that's a, sort of outside the uh, uh, acceptable level of debate. I yeah. mean, yeah. and that's what, that's where I am. I'm outside the acceptable level well, of debate. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've got a guest, a guest coming on next week who, um, you know, to me, foreign policy is domestic policy because mm-hmm. we spend, you know, like Bernie Sanders keeps talking about, you know, yeah. um, social Democrats, Sweden mm-hmm. and Norway. Well, social Democrats, Sweden and Norway spends 3% of their GP, G, GDP on defense. Right. We spend 70% of our GDP on it defense. It seems like it. It's like it, it literally is 70 cents on the dollar. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'm like, well, that doesn't, you know, that's kind of a big miss. Right. Well, well, Bernie was right just last night on the debate where he said uh, uh, that we spend more than the next 10 countries combined on yeah. our, our military budget. And that's totally unnecessary. For example, like Russia's the big, uh, uh, you know, like the boogeyman. Right. And they only spent like $61 billion on defense last year. Yeah. Uh, which Down is, from $80 billion. Yeah, which is less than what our most recent increase was yeah. uh, from the budget from one year to the next. Yeah. And like there was uh, uh, Congressman uh, Mac Thornberry from Wichita Falls, who uh, was chairman of the Armed Services Committee, he was saying, well, uh, this proposed uh, a budget that's $733 billion for defense versus the $750 billion that the president wants, our country will, will be open to all kinds of uh, attack and doom and destruction by not spending this extra $17 billion. Right. We're already spending $733 billion. Right. There should be massive cuts in the military budget, Absolutely. Not, uh, not increases. And that's not just because of like having less... Uh, less airplanes or less tanks or something. That's just, uh, for example, the Republicans even say, oh, there's this waste, fraud, and abuse all throughout the federal government. Oh, but not in the defense, not in the, in the Pentagon. Defense. But there, that's no different. Yeah. The Pentagon is just as open to having waste as the, uh, Listen, as the rest of the nothing government. Nothing changed since the yeah. 1970s when we found right. out they're paying 70 bucks for a hammer. Exactly. Remember that? They're, they're paying $200 for a toilet seat. Exactly. And there's, uh, there's been uh, more of that coming and out. And that was also. on 2020 when I was in high school, and you don't really see that much. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and, and people ignore the F-35, for example, and mm-hmm. even John McCain, who I'm not a big fan of, but at least he was in the Air Force, mm-hmm. knows his way around an airplane. Yeah. He even said it was a piece of shit. Yeah, so- And, uh, the, def- and, and the Pentagon didn't even want it. Mm-hmm. You know, the Department of Defense got nailed into, into, into that. But, mm-hmm. um, but so, okay, so moving forward- yes. um, um because I, I want to get into sure. your plan. So, what are the, what are the kind of? I mean, um, are, are are you more of a foreign policy driven person, or you look at do you look at domestic, or do you kind of see them as all one kind of big pie? Well, it's all one big pie because, uh, for example, I'm I'm very much in favor of uh, cutting the federal budget, and again, national the military spending is so much of it. Yeah. But there's ever there's so many other departments as well. Like uh, uh, basically, there's so there's just too many too much interference in the lives of Americans just throughout the federal government, just every uh, every government department. So uh, the Constitution doesn't even allow the government, the federal government to be involved in all this. Frankly, if you read the Constitution, it's very limited role. It's like uh, patents and copyrights, the post office and national defense. That's about all the federal government's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And federal criminal law is just supposed to be like treason, piracy and counterfeiting the currency. That's about it. But instead, we have like tens of thousands of pages of laws and rules and regulations. Yeah. The Espionage Act. Right. Well, that's yeah. that's one. But also yeah. just uh, just uh, uh, 
within the country. Say, for example, there's like all these uh, paperwork violations or, or bureaucratic administrative offenses that can send you to jail. Right. Or all the uh, mandatory minimum sentences for like drug conspiracies and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, um, there was an author that wrote a book uh, that said three felonies a day. And like Americans commit three felonies a day without even realizing it sure. because so many things are against the law. Right. And I pointed out there are 132,000 armed federal agents from 83 agencies that are to, uh, there to enforce federal law. Right. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing I'm totally against. And this is on the federal state. That's the number we have uh, uh, deported o- or de- deployed overseas. Right. It's just about the same. Yeah. yeah. And these are like they're like uh, they're looking for things to do. They're lo- they're looking for like people to. Uh, uh, to arrest. Yeah. And that's why there's so many people in prison in this country. Well, because we have privatized prisons. Well, and, not, not, and, the, and the feds in the state, they pay for those beds whether they're yeah, empty or not. Yeah, they do. Well, I'd rather they pay for empty beds than put, put innocent people in jail. I would too. I mean, yeah. and, and when you got when you got half of prisoners in this country in for non-violent, non-trafficking drug-related charges. Right. Yeah. And in California, Kamala Harris uh, brilliantly had mm-hmm. um, state firefighters. 40% of them are, 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 are prisoners. They get a dollar an hour. Wow. Oh, yeah. Very oh. economical. Oh, yeah. So when she's talking <laughs> about Family Leave Act, I'm yeah. like, oh, really? When you, put, when you put the parents of poor kids in jail, that's like Yasser Arafat going to a bris. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. And, and then you, when you have these these poor guys who fight these fires yeah. because they can be in the population because they're not violent. They got busted on pot yeah, or cocaine exactly. or something. And, and then they can't get a job at a fire department because they got a felony. Right, exactly. But yet they risk their lives to fight fires right. in California for three to five years. Yeah. Well, that part should change about not being able to get a job. Right. In fact, oh, it's so funny, though. It's like the law of unintended consequences, though. Like in California, they passed a law called uh, Ban the Box, which was where you aren't allowed to ask someone if they have a, a conviction. And okay. So, and so what happened was, uh, uh, of the prisoners, more white prisoners, more white ex-cons were getting jobs. But then more black people in general were not getting jobs because they were assumed to be former criminals and they couldn't ask. No one would assume that the white guy applying is a former criminal. Wow. Probably unless he had like tattoos on his face right, or something. Right, right, but otherwise, right. they wouldn't think that. Right. But then there's the prejudice, the inherent prejudice. Right. They go, oh, this black guy, was this guy a felon? Yeah. You know, and so fewer black people were getting jobs and more white ex-cons were getting jobs. So there's That's like amazing. unintended consequences. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. So okay, okay so yeah. oh, um, well, okay, so we we got some challenges here, right? right? Exactly. And we got some challenges here, and so you know, I want to obviously, I know what you're going to say, but I want to hear why you're going to say it, right? Okay. okay so, um, I'll give you an example. So I'm a I'm a fan of the idea of Medicare for all. Okay. Okay. Because I I, I my my day job I, I work in that realm, so uh-huh. I I kind of know okay. what, I know what you know benefits are, and I know mm-hmm. what the private market is, private insurance market, whatever. So all of that to say that when you have everyone paying 100 or 200 bucks mm. a month to cover their family. Yeah. W- w- whereas with the Obamacare and even prior to Obamacare, we have an unregulated monop- I can't even talk, an unregulated monopoly mm-hmm. who's allowed pretty much at, at will to sell a flawed predatory product. Mm-hmm. And when we did Obamacare, they made me buy it, mm-hmm. but they didn't fix the industry. Right. I got a friend who is now down to $210,000, but last November a year ago, She's been sick for a while. Her and her husband got a nice letter from um, their insurance company saying that they had rescinded the payments huh. uh, from all their clinics and doctors from uh, March of 2017 to November of 2018 to the tune of $325,000. Because when they recoded some of these things that they had previously approved, oh, they're experimental. Hmm. So now, fighting a year on top of her illness, yeah. now they're down to $210,000, which is pretty much the equity in their mm-hmm. home because mm-hmm. they live in Pacifica up north in California, ah, right? Yeah, yeah, nice. So, and they mm-hmm. bought it a long time ago when, you know, they got it for not a lot of money. Now yeah. it's, you know, but now it's like, okay, that's part of our retirement. Now that's sure. going to be gone. And she is not working. He is the sole breadwinner because she's mm-hmm. not working. So it's a predatory product that's wildly flawed. It's an unregulated monopoly. Mm-hmm. And they can just, you can have the coverage for peace of mind, but then when you need it, they could decide and 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 then and then forget about you know copays and you know coinsurance mm-hmm. and everything else. So I think it would be better to take say three hundred billion dollars out of the defense mm-hmm. and make sure that everyone's covered. Is do you see that as a violation of my rights? Well, I wouldn't call it a violation of your rights, but one thing you have to look at, just like the humorist P.J. O'Rourke said, if you think healthcare is expensive now, imagine how expensive it'll be when it's free. Right, right. That's the thing. It's the government involvement in healthcare, starting with the creation of Medicare and Medicaid, that's that led to the the uh, rise in healthcare prices. Because if the government's going to pay, 
then the uh, the vendors of uh, of the product are going to uh, charge whatever the government's going to okay, pay. Okay, that's for people 65 and over. But what about the rest of us? Well, I mentioned Medicaid as well. Okay, the same the same same as with college with the uh, with the all the student loans. The college's prices go up because the government's going to pay it. Right. You know, it's the same no, thing. No, that, the government's not going to pay it. I'm going to. I got a loan that I cannot bankrupt from. Right. Exactly. That's but, not the same thing. And, and college was free when I went. It was. I, I mean, went. Like, Cal, I went to Cal Poly Pomona. I got on in 1987. I was paying a service charge of 100 bucks a quarter. Hmm. I'm surprised. My wife went to Cal State LA, and huh? she, she did have to pay, you know, quarterly for. Yeah, we paid quarterly. Yeah. It was 100 bucks a quarter. Hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't six thousand dollars a quarter. I didn't need a student loan to finish college. My cousin mm-hmm. went to UCLA in the 70s. I mean, he paid for his books in his apartment. Oh, yeah. I went to I, UCLA. That part wasn't yeah. free. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not, I'm not going to ask how old you are. But, but it was about 1200 a year, I'd say, to go to UCLA. Okay. In the, 70, in the, in the 70s when he went, it was about 30 bucks a year. Mm-hmm. And he got into the law school for about the same amount of money. That's right. Law school and medical school cost the same as undergraduate back right. then. Yeah. Right. And this in was the, in the 70s, in the 80s, like 73, yeah. 4. Yeah. Okay. And then in the 80s, it got up to 1200 a year. Yeah. It's not 1200 a year anymore. Oh no, it's more. My daughter went there too, and it's uh, was a little bit more. A than little that. bit more, yeah, yeah, a little bit more. Like probably close, what, eighteen grand a year, fifteen? Not, not that much, but also it was acceptable for her because she lived at home, so we didn't have to worry about the dorm or the there you <laughs> meal, go. meal costs. You, you, or you can squeeze in the tuition. Yeah, exactly. Right, that's yeah, right. Exactly. So, yeah. so my only point is, is that yeah. when we make a commodity out of mm-hmm. everything, which is what we did with medical, for mm-hmm. example, because the health insurance companies were were you know just ridiculous paying on everything, mm-hmm. and then and then choosing and picking what they're going to pay and not pay. Yeah. Um, cause they want to make their profit. Mm-hmm. So that, that's why, you know, um, when people, uh, tell me things like, well, you know, we, we got to get, you know, the government out of our lives. Well, yeah. I don't want to give my life over to business. The great God business is not doing any better. Well, not always, but see, the thing is the way the, that the, the healthcare system has been set up, there's like no connection between the services you're receiving and you knowing how much the services cost. For example, if there was a price list for everything, you could like shop around for mm-hmm. different procedures mm-hmm. and there would be, with the free market, people willing to provide those for a lower cost. Sure. Same as like for electives, like LASIK eye surgery, for example, right. keeps going down in cost right. because it's a competitive marketplace. Right. And so uh, it would be similar for other procedures. Like there'd be like the, the, the appendix, uh, we're the appendix doctor and we have like uh, uh, this rate. Uh, so you know exactly what you're going to get uh, going in. For example, I broke my uh, right elbow uh, a couple months ago in a uh, work-related incident, mm-hmm. and I still don't know what all the expenses are from all the uh, uh, the ERs and the surgeon right. and, the, and the, all this stuff, because they right. just keep coming. Everybody bills you separately, and they just keep coming in and coming in, right. and there's no posted prices uh, right. ahead of time. Right. But, but see, in a free market, all that would be uh, posted, and people could decide where they're going to go and uh, what they're going to do. Now, the, uh, now as for paying for that even though, then that, you'd have more options. If you're not like, it's not a heavily regulated market, that's what keeps the prices up. Right. And if you have, aren't paying these ridiculous premiums, you could also have like health savings accounts, mm-hmm. which are like IRAs. Oh, right, I, know. I got you, one, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, that should be encouraged. In fact, sure. those have been around for about 20 years. Yeah. And uh, you, should, you can take money and save money tax-free towards your uh, healthcare costs. See, and here's the and, thing, though. Yeah. Every, everything you're talking about right now is the sins of business, right? Because it is the insurance guys who pay the politicians to not regulate them. Right. So everything you're saying is not happening now. So, I mean, do you see yourself um, creating a, a, a program to overhaul the insurance business? Well, sure. And in fact, it's interesting. I just saw that the Republicans finally, after 10 years, came up with a health care plan. Apparently, Forbes magazine was reporting it. Right. There are a few good ideas in there where they're promoting the health savings accounts. They're right. also promoting, uh, uh, the, uh, what's it called, where the uh, people just sign up with a particular doctor or health care group to, to get uh, treatment with that group. Sort of like concierge medicine, but less expensive. Um, d- d- uh, direct primary care. Yeah, direct primary care. The challenge, the, the only challenge with that, it's not a challenge. I mean, if you get what you pay for. Yeah. It's not expensive. Right. It's about anywhere from forty to eighty bucks a month. Right. And you get the you get the physicals. Mm-hmm. You get you get all the stuff you know that you need in the doctor's office. Yeah. And they get, and they uh, they work out a, a discount rate on um, on pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. So if you go get a prescription, mm-hmm. you, you get some of the same kinds of discounts that you would yeah. with um, an insurance company. Right. Exactly. And so, but you, instead of instead of going all over the country and being covered all over the world, whatever you're, mm-hmm. you're covered in Texas, exactly, right? you, or your Austin office, right? So, but, but beyond that, if something happens catastrophic in a catastrophic way, you're not covered. But then you should be able to buy catastrophic insurance. And like Obamacare was saying, well, the insurance plans all have to cover like every possible. Uh, it's a guaranteed issue. Yeah. It's guaranteed so, issue. But if you only wanted to buy, uh, uh, say, you know what, I'll take a chance that I can pay for my, uh, uh, you know, uh, tonsillectomy, 
but I sure don't. I sure want to have like emergency, like a cancer insurance, right? Or heart attack insurance, or hospitalization insurance, or right. just like different little things you could buy for you know a low amount because the underwriting would be, uh, the risk would be, what are the odds of this person getting cancer? Versus the odds of this person getting sick somehow. Sure. You know, because you're going to get sick. Right. But are you going to get cancer? You know? Right, right. And that's the challenge yeah. with the, the, the Aflacs of the world and colonials because they yeah. don't, they're not an insurance. They're a supplement. Mm -hmm. So they pay you cash for an accident or cancer or mm -hmm. heart attack. And yeah. you got to buy these separate policies, mm -hmm. which add up. And those those can add up. They do, but you can be, you also take can take a risk, or you can go with like a sharing service, like some of the religious sharing, medical sharing services that are less expensive. I mean, yeah, I'll give you an example though, and I'll say it right on the air. Yeah. Okay, Christian Healthcare Ministries. Mm -hmm. I applied for them. Yeah. And they denied me. Huh. Without even so much as a checkup, but I referred about eleven people to them. Yeah. All with names like Smith and Jones and everything else. Yeah. Knight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got accepted. Yeah, so I didn't even get through the through the first phase because of my, you know, Abdul Falafel Muslim name, uh -oh. right? Yeah. Maybe they figured you weren't really a Christian. And yeah. Uh... Well, and I haven't been for a long time. Right. Yeah. So, and I went. That's a that's another hour. But yeah. Right. Um, but I wouldn't. I would. I re, I wouldn't sign up. Wouldn't sign up for those because I'm not going to say that I'm a Christian. Right. If that, I'm well, not. Yeah. But then uh, there's finally a secular one that I signed up for. Yeah, and th th yeah. Th and that's a smaller one. Yeah. Because and because they are the biggest one. Uh, Christian Healthcare Ministries mm -hmm. is the biggest one. I mean, they're yeah. all over the country. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and the, but see, and then the and the challenge to that because that's that's based on the on the Medicare model. Mm -hmm. It's based on reference based pricing. That's what they call it. Mm. So, for example, if you have an eighty thousand dollar knee operation, right, mm -hmm. or what they say is eighty thousand yeah. dollars. Well, instead of Blue Cross just going okie dokie, you know, mm -hmm. and just raising your premiums, right, um, with your program or Christian Healthcare mm -hmm. or whoever they they do what Medicare does, and Medicare will. Or you know Christian healthcare, they'll call and go blah, 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 blah. Negoti want, negotiate. Yeah, the price, you want six hundred yeah. bucks for a bolt to go in? Is no, we'll give you thirty cents or whatever yeah, it is. Because, exactly. Because I, I know I know a couple of people. I know a couple of people that um, on this particular program, mm -hmm. um, the health the, the knee thing is a, an example. Oh yeah. And literally, it went from eighty thousand to seventeen thousand. Mm -hmm. Now they had a coinsurance of twenty percent. So instead of a sixteen thousand dollar copay, they had a thirty four hundred dollar copay. Makes a big difference. Big difference. You swipe that on a credit card, you're done. Right, because there are companies that just do that that negotiate yeah. uh, medical pricing. In fact, I'm, right. I'm an insurance claims adjuster okay. for property and casualty, okay. and, I, and I get injury claims that coming in all the time. Yeah. And we often refer them to those services that will mm -hmm. say, "Is this a legitimate cost? Yeah. Does it uh, reflect the standards of that location right. or whatever?" And I would contact, like, say, a, a hospital and say, "You know." You're charging about three times what the standard is. Yeah. So they say, "Well, we don't care. We're going to charge you anyway." Well, you know? I'll, I'll make the <laughs> suggestion to you. I got a yeah. brothers. I got two brothers who are, who are doctors. Mm -hmm. I got one one specifically who's an MD. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about this about three months ago. Mm -hmm. And when this this bit about the rescinding payments came up, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Dude, I don't like dealing with Medicare. They're paying the ass." But I'll tell you what. I this is my brother's opinion. Yeah. I believe that anyone with a social security number in this country should have medical. Mm -hmm. He goes, and while Medicare is not the sexiest money, yeah. it's the most consistent money. He goes, and you know what? They never send me two or three times a month. They never send me or my group mm -hmm. uh, rescinding letters. Because, but I get a couple of rescission letters from all of them every month. Yeah. Aetna, Blue Cross, all of them. Yeah, see, I don't like that. I don't like rescission in general. And, uh, see, yeah. I'm a very big advocate of the idea of estoppel, which is a legal concept where people uh, get uh, are told something and they act accordingly, like they. That's what happened? They, yeah, they yeah. act accordingly because of what they've been told. Right. And the government violates it all the time, and, and private yep. companies violate it all the all time. The time. But, but it is a well-known legal concept yep. that you can you can uh, you know sue because of violations of a stop. And a lot of them do. Yeah. And, and then a lot of them just declare BK. You yeah. know, you put a stint yeah. in the guy's chest, and now the eighty-five thousand dollars isn't covered. Mm -hmm. He's like, but you guys approved it. I went and had the surgery. Right. And they said, well, well, well you had, we miscoded it. That's always their excuse. We miscoded yeah, see, it. That shouldn't be. That, shouldn't once, be. Once they say they're going to do it, they're going to do it. See, and that's, yeah. something, and that's something that I think, you know, um, yeah. and I'm a taxpayer. I'm a voter. I'm, you know, I'm just a guy with a, I'm just a loud mouth with a mic. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a journalist. Mm -hmm. But this is something you might want to consider put into your platform to discuss mm -hmm. that in a, and not, you know, people can, you know, their, their eyes bleed over when, yeah. when you, you get too into the weeds. But sure. to at least make that point. Because everybody knows somebody. Mm -hmm. If they didn't go through it themselves, they got screwed by their insurance company. Yeah. Whether it's cancer or or, or what have you. Yeah. Right. Um. But uh. But yeah. So anyway, that's if you're talking about the um about the deficit in the federal budget. Oh, you, yeah. you can't really do it without talking about defense. Right. Exactly. Well, defense and the medical costs because uh, the uh, go government involvement is. Well, look at uh, Medicare, Medicaid. How much of the federal budget goes to to those? Along with Social Security and yeah, but uh, we pay for Social Security. 
We do. And I pay for Medicare. I think they pay so, out more than we well, pay Well, then I want a refund. Security. I've been paying this crap for 40 years, oh, yeah, exactly. so I want a refund. Oh, yeah. This is, this is where, when, this, this is where yeah. I take umbrage when, when the Republicans or whoever yeah. say, well, we need to cut those entitlements. Oh, you mean like the goddamn defense budget? Let's cut that entitlement. Oh, that's yeah. a fucking entitlement because that is literally socialism for the rich. Oh, yeah. Corporate and, welfare, too. That's yeah. right. And corporate, it's capitalism for the rest of us yeah. and socialism for the rich. Sure. So you mean to tell me that you're going to make sure that Duda Duda sells weapons to the Saudis- mm-hmm. Because they need to make their nut. Mm-hmm. How about we get rid of that entirely? Exactly. You know, it's like, is, 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 why is it okay for you guys to make refrigerators to drop on people? And then when it comes time to any sort of, uh, I mean, geez, do, uh, um, accountability, mm-hmm. it's out the window. Yeah. It's out the window. We, we, and God forbid, we, you know, the Pentagon couldn't even get um, audited successfully. No. So they can't even, uh, they can't even issue a third-party audit to Raytheon or Baker or whoever. No, they don't know where their money's going. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's it's just like this recent issue about uh, uh, the $400 uh, uh, million aid to Ukraine, the military aid to Ukraine that Trump supposedly has this quid pro quo on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My question is, why are we even giving that to the Ukraine whether they're investigating anybody or not? I wouldn't – I would cut off foreign aid to them and most everybody else also. Well, you back up a few more years. Yeah. And Biden and Obama. Mm-hmm. This is another thing the Democrats like to ignore. Yeah, and, 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 and this one's funny. When you have you ever noticed when you okay, the the moon landing not happening, that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, I can't prove that. It's right. a theory. Mm-hmm. There's not even an outcome to show me that the theory might be pl- plausible. Right, right. But the fact that we did back a neo-Nazi led coup in the Ukraine just to piss off Putin, mm-hmm. installed those guys. Yeah, then they had their first election. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't fix that. And then the comedian guy that ran and won last year right. was a right winger. Mm-hmm. Still our guy. Yeah. Those are facts. Mm-hmm. But Biden's kid did take that job. Biden was bragging about it at a Council yeah. of Foreign Relations press conference. Oh, exactly. There's a lot, apparently a lot of politicians' kids have been involved in the Ukraine. John Kerry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, 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 George Bush, for yeah. Christ's sake. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he would have been president if it wasn't for his dad. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, but, but just on that matter alone, yeah. just that matter alone, it's, there's all kinds of proof. It's all kinds of... Um, uh, results after the fact sure. that could point to something. Hunter Biden wasn't his brother. Bo no. Biden was top cop in Delaware, the sharp guy. Yeah. Hunter Biden was uh, Hunter Biden was the guy who was well, you know, on not, something. He was on yeah. coke. Yeah, he got he got he flamed out of the navy. Yeah, he had a coke problem. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry if you're flaming out of the navy with a coke problem, you got a coke problem. Yeah, because a lot of the guys I knew guys in the navy, and a lot of them are really good guys, and they don't do anything wrong wrong, but they all like a little bit of the nose candy. So for Hunter Biden to get Flamed out of the Navy because of that. And then you, mm-hmm. I'm, as, I'm qualified yeah. to go run natural gas in Ukraine mm-hmm. as much as he is. Sure. But he's getting 50 grand a month. Which is like a million a year or something. Yeah, yeah. man. And then his old man, you know, brags about it. Yeah. That he, that, that he was going to, that, that, that Obama was going to give him a billion dollars mm-hmm. in aid. Yeah. And you know the story. Oh, yeah. And so th- he said that. Mm-hmm. And what was the result? They fired the top cop. Right. Burisma was not investigated. This company right. that had corruption up the rear end for years. Yeah. So and then uh, it, it just it, oh. it, dri- it drives me it drives me bananas. So now we flash forward to now. Yeah. And the Democrats want to act like, and their big pitch is yeah. that they asked him. Here's what Trump fucked up. Yeah. This is where Trump fucked up. Mm-hmm. That call should be made by by Barr. Attorney General makes that call. Mm-hmm. Vice President makes that call. Right. You don't make that call. No. You know, well, you, Trump you, doesn't know how to be president. Really. No, he does. He he spends more time picking out his couch than, than he does knowing what the kind of rules are. Yeah, you take I, a call from Taiwan, dude. You don't take a congratulatory congratulations call from Taiwan. We got a deal. It's, <laughs> it, we've had a deal for a long time. It's you just don't. You know, he just he's a knothead. Yeah, well, Nancy Nancy Pelosi was right. He's like an imposter, is what she called him. Like he knows he's an imposter in the role and just does whatever he and feels like. And he's insecure. Like. And yeah. he's insecure. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. But um. So what, what other what other um, what other what other platform points uh, is you're gonna because I mean, you can't have thirty like what what are, what are your main obviously defense um, yeah you know, and honestly you, you shot out some good ideas about you know Medicare I don't completely agree with you but they're right. actually pretty good ideas sure um, so what, what other uh, points on your well platform? of course cutting the budget and agencies yeah. and all that but also uh, uh, the war on drugs has been uh, a big <laughs> issue for me uh, libertarians of course have never favored the war on drugs no and of course over the years it goes up and down up and down about uh, you know the moral panic in the public uh, just say no from Nancy Reagan right. mandatory minimum sentences from Joe Biden back right. in the 90s right. you know Ugh. and just locking up generations of uh, of young black and Latino men yeah. and causing their harassment by uh, uh, cops and des- destruction of the inner cities and everything because of the war on drugs. Uh-huh. In reality, like with marijuana, the most dangerous thing about it is getting caught having it. Right. I mean, um, 
there are more people arrested for marijuana uh, each year still than all the other crimes combined. combined. And it's ridiculous. There should be no marijuana arrests. Marijuana should be perfectly legal, should uh -huh. be treated like, like onions or carrots or something, because it's like a plant, yeah. just like yeah. onions and carrots. Much. But again, you should, just should be adults right. uh, using it. But, but still, uh, the war on drugs needs to end. Marijuana needs to be taken off the schedule of- uh, Schedule one. Schedule, it's a schedule one narcotic. Of any schedule. It yeah. shouldn't be anything. Yeah. And uh, now I favor ending uh, the war against all drugs, right. but you got to start with marijuana. It's so obvious and yeah. so many people have come under the uh, justice system. Right. You could quote unquote justice when- Sure. Because they are given some of the most ridiculous mandatory sentences for nothing. Yeah. And then when they change the laws, in a lot of places, they don't get out. Right. Some of them are still in jail. Still in jail? Yeah. California's lost guys in jail. Yeah, exactly. Those guys fighting fires yeah. in California are still in jail fighting fires in California, yeah. even though last year or the year right. before, the recreational thing went away. Yeah. I, I was home uh, mm -hmm. like six months ago. Yeah. I stopped off at a store. Mm -hmm. And I drove back home so I could drive back and you know back, back with it. Yeah, and I'm saying that on the air. And they're listening to me anyway, so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and Kamala Harris put some of those people in jail. She, you damn care. right she did. Yeah, you, you, you damn right she did. And, yeah. and and for her, and this this is what angers me. Both sides do this. Mm -hmm. Both sides do this. They ignore the sins of their guy because yeah. I think in America we have this uniquely th bizarre mm -hmm. behavior pattern where yeah. we believe in good and bad and mm -hmm. black and white. Mm -hmm. So we got to say them bad, these guys good, mm -hmm. right? We just pulled a coup in Bolivia. Yeah. It was a fucking coup, all right? It yeah. wasn't, the guy didn't resign. When you get the military, you got the country. Mm -hmm. And unlike Venezuela, who twice now the military bailed their ass out. Yeah. This guy, he lost the military because we paid them more money. Ah, now see, that hasn't, that hasn't been in the news very much. It's not in the news at all. Like and, anybody really cares about Bolivia. Right. There, and then yeah. I'm kind of going, you should care about <laughs> Bolivia because that's where your kids are going to go to go to die. Mm. Your kids are going to go die in the middle because we're going to turn South America into Vietnam. And it's a bigger Vietnam. Right. And it's we, crazy. We should all we should do is be trading and, uh, yeah. and, all, and everything. And, not and, have any and, political. But it's, it's, like it's, that. but it's greed, man. Yeah. I mean, because they got lithium. They got natural gas. Mm -hmm. And uh, 14, 15 years ago, when Morales came in, by the way, he took the national poverty rate from 38 percent down to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. And when he came in and kicked those guys out and nationalized the resources, wow, he created jobs. Oh my gosh. And he built affordable housing so people could afford to live in that housing with the jobs that he gave them, right? He, and he also, uh, because he was a, co a coca, coca farmer, yeah. um, he, st he st threw out the US Drug Enforcement Agency also. Yeah. Yeah. And the DEA was a very destructive force. They, yeah. were, they, they were that thorn. Mm -hmm. So, but we're, it, we, at the rate we're going, between mm -hmm. Central and South America and Guatemala just, just bent over for us recently too. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, we're going to turn Central and South America into Vietnam, and whose kids are going to go die for that? And that's what uh, that's what I'm against. You know? In fact, in fact, uh, this is that's new. It seems like the Middle East is the uh, biggie, and it's going to continue to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, sure, the whole, it's, that's my view on the whole world. We should be our troops should be here protecting this country. We shouldn't be interfering in the affairs of other countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what uh, our military industrial complex wants because yeah. that that sells more. Uh, more weapons, more and, weapons and more power for these guys as uh -huh. well. Uh -huh. And, you know, the, the ones that are in uh, academia, you know, that are, uh, they want to be right. So they're saying mm -hmm. this is our viewpoint. This is the nation's viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Anybody that diverges from that, Tulsi Gabbard, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. and libertarians mm -hmm. is like some, uh, you know, you got to like marginalize them and not, not listen to them. Right. And well, so, that's what they, and that's what they do. They, you, yeah. you guys are crackpots. You're crazy. Yeah. I mean, I remember my whole life, I mean, Ron Paul, he's crazy. He's cra he was the first. He was the first non-party guy I voted for in 1988, mm -hmm. because when I saw when I was paying is when I really started paying attention. Yeah. And the Democratic primary, they actually I don't remember that 88 uh, primary campaign. Well, that was like Dukakis ended up with that one. How yeah. the fuck did Dukakis get that? I'm like, <laughs> hey, hey, wait, I'm sorry. You got Bruce Babbitt before he sold his soul to the Clintons. Mm -hmm. You got Paul Songus, mm -hmm. Paul Simon, Bob Kerry. I couldn't write a better guy than Bob Kerry. Yeah. Bob Kerry, good looking guy, lost a leg in Vietnam, yeah. was having sex with Deborah Winger oh, in the yeah. governor's mansion oh, as yeah. a bachelor. Oh, yeah. I got to sell this guy to you? Yeah. I have to sell this guy to you. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's got America written all over it. Oh, yeah. And you gave it to Elmer Fudd. Yeah. And they had him in that tank with the Jocelyn oh, yeah. helmet. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, it was a fix. And it was a fix. And then I started, oh, yeah. and then my buddy goes, I think you'd like this Ron Paul guy. And, and oh, yeah, he, gave exactly. me, he gave me a pamphlet. And honestly, honest to God, mm -hmm. with the exception of a couple of things and the pro-life stance, I'm like with 97% of what he says. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, I, I'm not a big fan of, um, of the idea of government doing absolutely nothing because this isn't 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, he's, you know, when you get the top five things that this country needs to be about, he's yeah. all about those things. Oh, yeah. Ron is wonderful. He's my political hero. I mean, he's yeah. uh, he is incredible. And they say he's crazy. Yeah. But he wants to end the Fed. I'm like, why, why is ending the Fed bad? Do you know what the Fed is? 
Exactly. Just and just auditing the Fed. How hard is that? Oh my you know. God. Yeah. People clutch their pearls and they're like, "Oh my God, he's crazy." Yeah. And of course, a lot of and Bernie favors auditing the Fed. Goddamn right. In fact, there was a press conference way back with Ron and Bernie mm-hmm. years ago. They both were. Uh, yeah. Fed. They they both wanted to audit the Fed. Wow. I don't know if Bernie's going to kick stick with that or not. But no. he, he actually uh, does come up with some pretty good uh, slogans. But I don't believe he's ever going to be president. So it might, well, he's uh, not. That's no. this, this thing I was saying to uh, somebody on the, uh, one of the, one of the shows a few weeks back. Um, Bernie is just going to promise all the free cake and and, yeah. and marshmallows, and then he's going to do not do a goddamn thing because no. he, he's not going to get the nomination. That's why I got that tw- they got, that's why they have like twenty guys running. They are yeah. because the, the Democrats already rigged the vote. They already fixed it. So like two years ago, to make sure that you know they didn't have a problem at the at the at the convention, mm-hmm. everyone's freaking about the super delegates. So they got rid of the super delegates mm-hmm. on the first ballot. Yeah. So if Bernie doesn't get fifty one percent of the vote, right, it goes to the second ballot. They're on the second ballot. So right. the super delegates will then vote like they did last time against. I mean, West Virginia, every county of West Virginia went for Bernie mm-hmm. and they flipped it to Hillary. Sure. Right. And no one's talking about that. No one's talking about the fact that she sucked out two billion dollars of down ballot money yeah. into her campaign. Oh, yeah. That's campaign finance fraud. Mm-hmm. Not investigating that. No, of course not. Not even a single. And when I tell people that, they go, oh, well, well but we're, we're talking about the matter at hand. OK, <laughs> that was before. I'm like, I'm, in what con- I remember when I was a kid in school, they mm-hmm. taught you those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. Yeah. And now I'm hearing, oh, well, that was a past. You can't blame Obama now. Uh, yes, I can. Yeah, you can blame anybody you want. You can blame anybody you want. Charles yeah. Manson, still responsible for those murders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah still responsible. Exactly. You know, we, 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 killed, we killed people, we killed like a million people yeah. in the Middle East. I, I saw numbers as high as 3 million mm-hmm. in the last 10 years, yeah. 15 years. And and we, like 15,000 of our own kids. Yeah. And we blew like $9 trillion so far. Yeah. That's half the goddamn national debt. It's crazy. It's insane. It is crazy. It's insane. Yeah. Now with the uh, with the current Democrats, it's like uh, which ones? There's several of them probably would be approved by the establishment. Right. So they're, the establishment's like hedging their bets. There's probably a number of those folks that they mm-hmm. would agree that would be acceptable. I think they were trying to like push Kamala Harris. She flamed out. But she flamed out. She, she flamed she, out. But she her, just, truth, her truth came out. Yeah. But she's so perfect for them. Yeah. Because she seems like she's countercultural because she's a woman and she's, uh, she's multi-ethnic black. and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but she just fulfills the exact viewpoints of the uh, the entire establishment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, this is the, yeah. and this is the thing I was saying for years. I don't know why the Republicans don't like Obama except for the fact that he's black. He was black Reagan. Yeah. He did everything a Republican would do. You know, he expanded, mm-hmm. the, he exp- he expanded the banking powers. Mm-hmm. He expanded the surveillance state. Yeah. He posse comitatus, got rid of that. Habeas oh, yeah. corpus, got rid of that. Oh, yeah. You're going, wait, wait, wait. You, see, and this is what makes me mad about Obama compared to Trump. See, Trump's a stupid man. Mm-hmm. And even a stop clock until the time right twice a day. But Obama. <laughs> yeah. Very that guy, smart. That guy is not, he's not a dummy. No. And he was, he was, he was the first black editor at the Harvard Law Review. Mm. Practicing attorney. So yeah. as a kid, he was a bright guy. Yeah. He'd been a bright guy his whole life. Sure. And so and, and the other day I heard some, some apologists go, well, he was a young man when he came in office. He was 47 years old when he came in office. Yeah. Similar to Clinton. Because I was yeah. 40, I was 45. Yeah. You ain't that young at 45. You've been around the block. You know your history. You know what's going yeah. on. It is for a politician, though. It's kind of young. Uh, well, kind of young because they get, because there's that. You know, you don't have that. You don't have the knowledge of that back room speech the CIA gives you. Yeah. You know, we got this big book, and then they show you the Zapruder film. <laughs> you know? And if you don't do what we said, yeah, that campaign shit was great. Oh yeah. If you don't do what we said, <laughs> back into the left, yeah. right? Um, but so okay, so um, you know, gosh, this went by fast. Uh, so we got uh, we got a few minutes left, but. Um, Okay, so obviously the deficit. You got some plans on, on medical. Yeah. Um, what are, what, are, what well, other? And we talked about the drug war. The drug war, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and of course that 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 segues right into uh, um, criminal justice reform, also. Right. And this seems to be uh, interesting. One of the few bipartisan issues. Maybe it's tripartisan then, if you add libertarian. Sure. And that says there's too many people in jail Green's for too. the for the wrong things. Yeah. But uh, the U.S. has about four point two percent of the world's population and over twenty percent of the world's prisoners. Twenty five. Yeah, I was looking at the actual numbers, and it was like 21, 22. Oh, it might, it might okay. be as much as 25, but okay. I was trying to get actual numbers for okay. like my uh, website. And uh, it seems like Americans are not you know, foul or horrible criminals more than the rest of the world. No. It's just that uh, more people are arrested for more things. There's too much police interaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the people, they, they are talking about, well, uh, the police stopped this person, and he tried to flee, and they shot him, and they shouldn't have. Uh, you know, and the complaints, the police brutality and all, the police should never even stop that person. Who cares if his tail lights yeah, out? You know, right. mail, mail a citation to the registered owner. Take a picture of it and mail right. a citation to the registered right. owner. You don't have to, like, stop somebody right. and uh, and set up, like, a case that's going to – could kill the cop. Sure. Could kill the driver. Sure. And all that. And the way they used to in New York, uh, stop and frisk, just stop people at random. And, and start, Bloomberg wants to yeah, run Bloomberg, again. Bloomberg. He's Correct. horrible. He's horrible. And uh, the point is, too many – there's too much police interaction. 
And when, they, when the police always say, oh, we, we, when we shot that kid who was running away from us, we were following procedure. Right. And unfortunately, they probably were. That's why there needs to be retraining of police for like conflict resolution right. and de-escalating situations. Right. Instead, cops have been fired for de-escalating when, they, when they've been trained to shoot. Right. There's been a few cases of that. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it is. That's ridiculous. It is. I mean, um, I w- I, what I've seen, like the, co- the, the, the cops like start giving all these orders to people like, you know, get on your knees and back up and, you know, do this and that. And then when, then the person's not who's probably high or drunk can't even understand what's being said to right. them. And then they say, you know, and they're, they're, they're tasing them and shooting them and all this stuff. It's ridiculous. It is. It's pr- it's right. Well, let me ask you something. So um, in the last at least 30 years, 25 years. Yeah. Especially since the crime bill got passed, mm-hmm. um, it just seems like we've been hyper militarizing the police. Exactly, force. and part of it's actually even physical. The, the feds are like uh, giving tanks and and all this uh, yeah. to, to make the police in, physically into like an awesome militarized presence. Yeah. Well, there's two things on that. First of all, if that military equipment still works. Why are they giving it away? They should still be using it in the right. U.S. military instead of buying more uh, tanks yeah. and yeah. buying new ones. They right. could, those probably last another 50 years. They're, they're giving them away to the police and buying oh, well, new ones. Yeah. Well, they're uh, double dipping, too. The, the military ain't giving yeah. it to them. Yeah. They're, they're, those guys are – city of Azusa, they own a, a big-ass SWAT truck and two tanks. I thought those were given by no, the military. They're buying it. Ah. They're paying with, 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 with taxpayers' dollars in those towns. Yeah, see, that's ridiculous. The yeah. school district police have gotten tanks. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's absurd. And see, that should not be available to them. They shouldn't be trained as military, right. militarized. I mean, there should be one unit. I'm, it's okay for a SWAT team to be out there for like sure. a hostage situation. Sure. But they shouldn't be serving warrants. Right. And they, and they, and they shouldn't be like uh, itching for something to do. It's like if, 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 you're, if every problem, if you're a hammer, every problem is a nail. Right. And that's the way they're, they're acting. They want to, they want to, they want to show their, their stuff. Sure. You know, if they have all this equipment, they're going to just roll it out and like go to that guy who has like like a a kid with a toy. You don't not use the toy. Right. Exactly. Like when you're a kid you got, remember when you got a brand new toy, you can hardly wait to play with it. Exactly. It's the same deal. Exactly. But if they're going to serve a warrant, they should send a couple of cops just to knock on the door. Obviously they're, they're armed like cops are, but they shouldn't bring in like the SWAT team or something. Helicopters. And and they shouldn't come in in the middle of the night when people are asleep. (laughs) Right. They should knock on the door and people are awake and go to the door and say, what do you want? And then they hold, give them the warrant. Right. You know, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, they might somebody might run and flush the drugs down the toilet, but they shouldn't be those shouldn't be illegal, or there shouldn't be a warrant for those anyway. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I think you and I are the same page. Yeah. I've been saying this for years, like yeah. even at least twenty years. We should legalize everything. If yeah. Will, including heroin. Yeah. 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 That's called evolution. Exactly. If you're dumb enough to overdose, who well, well, and and then people get pissy. I'm like, I got a brother who was a drug addict, mm-hmm. right? He's in a wheelchair because of it. Yeah. Right. And that, so I watch what happened. Yeah. It, it if the addict is if it's illegal, the addict mm-hmm. will break into your house to get it. Right. And and so if if he wants to do it to himself, it's that old Jeffersonian, exactly. you know, between my forefinger and my nose. Yeah. What the hell? Who cares? Yeah. And I don't care. I mean, I hope no one d- does heroin. Right. I hope nobody dies. Exactly. But I also don't think that the trillions of do- or at least a trillion dollars we have spent since Nixon yeah. declared this war on sure. drugs. It's been like a trillion, I think. Sure. To, with no outcomes. No positive outcomes. Yeah. At all. So how is le- how is making drugs illegal? Exactly. And, and if heroin was legal, you'd uh, you'd have like packaged uh, dosages that you'd know what you were getting. It wouldn't be adulterated, or you'd sue the company that sure. that was producing it. Sure. And uh, one of the problems now with opioids in general, people are not generally dying of the tablets like OxyContin that have fixed dosages on them. Right. That's when they're cut off of those. Then they get the heroin that's cut with right. fentanyl and all these all uh, these other crazy here, things. Yeah. If you but if uh, it was all legal, if they could just continue to buy. You know, it's terrible. They're they're hooked. Yeah. But they they aren't likely to die from those unless they just keep taking too many. Uh, but they know what they're getting. With the, so with let, me, the let me ask you: are, are you familiar with Portugal and their and their outcomes? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you can you share that a little bit of that? Well, Portugal uh, legalized all drugs, right? And drug usage and all, right. and they they are treating it as a medical problem, right? And so that's the case. If someone is like addicted to drugs, that's a medical problem. They shouldn't be locked up in jail. They should be going to a hospital. Right. And uh, that's what Portugal has done. But, but because it's because A, it's not what the establishment here wants to hear. Right. You don't hear about it. And B, Portugal is such a small country. Right. I mean, if it was Germany that did that, you might hear more about it. But, right. But, uh, but uh, Portugal is real small. And there's there's other countries that have uh, better policies than that. Like sure. Uruguay, the government sells marijuana to people. You know. Right. It's like... Uh, but Portugal's the best because it's like all the drugs. It's one of the few places they've. Uh, and as and as yeah. a result, their 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 addiction rates have dropped dramatically. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, but this country has more of that uh, puritanical. Yeah. Like they just don't want people to be high. 
right. in this country. They want you high in Jesus. Yeah, they're, they're going <laughs> to hammer, hammer you down if you if you try to have any kind of pleasure. You know, yeah, like, yeah. like, like they, there's all these sex moral panics and drug moral panics, yeah. and, and you know whatever it is that uh, people are trying to do that uh, that the uh, majority doesn't think is right. Right. Well, so it's the government's need to control vice, right? Oh yeah. And that's just exactly. what that, that's just what you know it's always been. I mean, and, and based on this puritanical, yeah, you know, like you got to believe in the spirit, God. I mean, we got freedom of religion in this yeah. country, but yeah. I got freedom from it. Right, so and should, I don't. I don't want my tax dollars going to that. Exactly, and it, and, it, and it shouldn't be. And it's been, been like the undercurrent of U.S. law, like the uh, um, that the, that the laws are going to be passed because of those moral uh, yeah. attitudes. I mean, like back, what about like stores being having to be closed on Sunday, like in some of the southern states, or yeah. not being able to sell beer on Sunday till right? noon? Yeah, or yeah. How many times really... I'm, on way, I'm on my way to a barbecue? I'm, I'm living for four and a half years. I still forget it's yeah. Sunday. And I go, hey, come there's chains on the door. I don't want beer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you can't have any till 12. I'm like, oh. isn't it crazy? Am no. I supposed to be in church? I ain't going. I know. <laughs> May as well let me have it. <laughs> it's insane. I mean, uh, see, the states were allowed to set up those kind of laws under the 21st Amendment that right. repealed prohibition. So right. it's, and the southern states have done it in spades, you know, about, yeah. uh, right. about these crazy regulations. But you should, they, it should be eliminated. It should be total free market and alcohol. Yeah. And uh, instead of having a dry county and a wet county yeah. uh, and a not buying beer till noon New or, county. Or, or licensing for, uh, uh, liquor licenses for establishments. Sure. You know, like uh, every restaurant should be able to serve beer if they want or wine or right. whatever without getting a special license. Right. Well, hey, yeah. listen, man, ra- in, in wrapping yeah. a couple minutes left, um, so when's your convention? When's y'all Libertarians' convention? Uh, our state convention is in uh, April in McAllen, but we do have uh, county conventions all across the state. Every county is going to have one in March. Okay. Uh, where we nominate the uh, local candidates. Okay. State candidates, uh, Kerry McKinnon, who's going to be our U.S. Senate candidate. Been on the I show think, twice? Yeah, he's uh, probably be nominated at our uh, uh, convention in April. What's he running for this time? Uh, U.S. Senate against John Cornyn. Okay, good. And then uh, uh, Matthew Sterritt's running for railroad commissioner, another statewide office. There's not okay. as many offices up this year for statewide. Right, right. And so uh, we're going to have as many candidates as we can, but fewer than usual because of these filing fees that right. they put on. Yeah, three grand's and, a lot of money. Yeah, we had like 100 candidates last year. Right. In 2018, it's going to be probably be down to like 30 or something this year because it's 3,100 for Congress, like only 750 to run for state house, 1,250 to run for state Senate. But still, that's expensive if, yeah. uh, if people aren't used to paying that. Right, right. So man, hopefully the, hopefully the courts will rule in our favor on that so we can just put our candidates up uh, up again. Nice. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, I've had, uh, Carrie, Carrie's been on a couple times. Mm-hmm. And uh, Neil Dykeman's been on, I think, once. Both are very good guys. Good guys, and and, yeah. and me and Neil had a fun time on the show. Mm-hmm. We we kind of kind of like this. We but but Neil Neil's more serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, so me and him were just going back and forth, <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of. But it was it was yeah. it was good. A lot of lot of info got out, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but what I'd like to do, um, you know, we're coming into the holidays. I mean, I'd love to have you come back, man. I would love to. Yeah, have you come back on the show and, and talk about some more things in some more detail as well. I mean, but you know, you you got a basic good a, a basically. Um, uh, a basically libertarian platform, um, largely most of which I agree. You know, I think I think the medical thing you and I aren't going to ever agree on, right? Um, that, you know, but but you got some good ideas to fix the current system, right? And we could c- agree with probably what some of the problems are, but we just oh, hell yeah. we're coming. Oh hell yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, let me uh, start wrapping up here, folks. Uh, my guest has been Ted Brown. He's going to be running for uh, Congress, the 17th district in Texas, and covers um, everywhere from like Austin Webb through Waco. It's a big district. And um, yeah, as you've heard uh, him talking about his, his platform, a lot of what he believes, I think, uh, agree with him or not, if this stuff makes you uncomfortable, it's supposed to, so sleep tight. 